Yes, we've got the power, right? It's great to see you today. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for those of you that are watching online. And uh, we're praying for the health of everyone. Here in this auditorium, we spray and spray and spray. Each side here has every other row seating, if that makes you more comfortable. And we're just so thankful that God has helped us, and we're glad that you're here today. Well, we're in this series on the Holy Spirit, and those of you that have been walking with us through Acts on the U version, we came to the end today. Well, we've got another new one, so if you go to thefathershouse.com, and if you'll scroll down through there, you'll see the other one that we have, and uh, I'm a ringing a little bit up here so uh, you'll hear you'll see the other one that we have there available for the gifts of the spirit so sign up for that uh, join us we had almost 120 or 30 last time so it's a, I think it's an eight day one so that will be really really good right you have your Bible with you your iPad your um, eyeballs whatever you use let's make our confession let's say it together this is my Bible it is the Word of God it is life to me. Today I receive the word. I confess my mind is alert. <clears throat> Amen. Father, we're just so grateful today for your presence. Lord, we are um, agree in prayer for the tragic events that are happening around the world. But Lord, we know that you've got everything under control as we submit to you. That evil cannot win, but you will balance the books one of these days, and we look to that. We see these signs, and they remind us that your coming is so near. So, Lord, we just pray as a church that we'll be equipped and ready and in place doing what you've called us to do, that we won't be sleeping when you come, but we'll be doers. So today, Lord, I ask for your anointing. <clears throat> I can't do anything without you, and I thank you today in the name of Jesus. A couple of men were standing beside the Niagara Falls, and I don't know if you've ever been there or not, but it's quite a breathtaking experience to feel the power that's raging there. And one of the men said, you know what? Right there, you're looking at the most untapped use of power in the world. I think maybe the most untapped power source is the Holy Spirit. God wants us to live a life of uh, Christian power. Our theme verse that we've been looking at is Acts 1 and 8. Would you read it with me? It says this, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. So let me just give you a review. This is what the fifth week or fourth week, let me, fifth week, let me just give you a review. We said, first of all, we're not just talking about the power, we're talking about a person. The Holy Spirit is part of the Godhead, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We said in week one that Jesus said, I'm going to send you another helper, Alos, another helper just like him. So think about this. <clears throat> just as Jesus was the helper to the disciples, the Holy Spirit is our helper actively engaged in our life today. Isn't that awesome? So we looked and we saw how that uh, the Holy Spirit baptizes us, convicts us, draws us, and baptizes us into the body of Christ. And then we saw that the gift of Jesus, how that he sends the Holy Spirit upon us to baptize us in or with the Holy Spirit. I believe this, Pentecost, people pray, oh Lord, send us another Pentecost. I don't believe Pentecost needs to be repeated. I just believe it needs to be appropriated. I just believe that today. You see, having the Holy Spirit power available to us is not the same as making ourselves available to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is here today to be with us. You know, the Holy Spirit is not given to us for entertainment or for us to have a level of maturity that we're better than somebody else. You know, <clears throat> the first week I talked about this extension cord. This extension cord here is plugged in to a socket. That socket is plugged into the electrical grid, and we have electricity coming through here. So this, this cord 
can stand up here and say, hey, look at me, look at me. <clears throat> I've got power, i got power. And he can say, hey, uh, just, just come on up here, Jimmy. Uh, no, not yet, no, just kidding. And uh, stick your fingers down inside here, and let's see what happens. So here's Jimmy. So is that the source of power? You know, there's a lot of people say, well, I want the power because I want to shake. You know, I, I want to feel that power. I want to be able to lay hands on somebody and knock them into the next century. You know, I want to do uh, that's not the purpose of this accord. It's not that we could frame it and say, look at this nice extension cord. Isn't it awesome? No. This extension cord is made to be a channel. A channel through which the power comes so that we can take this light that doesn't work by itself and we can plug this light in and then what we could do is we turn the light on and it works. See, the Holy Spirit in our life is not here just for show off or to try to be more important than somebody else, but it's that he can flow through us gifts, abilities, ministry to others. Amen. It's not so we can just sit back and, and say, yeah, I, I, I have a prayer language and I pray, as Paul said, more than you all and as somebody else, and, and you don't, so that means I must be one, so just frame me, put me up on the wall, I'm better than, no, we are a channel through which the Holy Spirit flows. Hey, how many of you like to receive gifts? How many would like to have this gift today? We like gifts, right? I like gifts. Do you have any gifts that you've never opened? Nah, yeah, if you're like me, you give me a gift, I tear it in right there. You say, and you say, save the paper. We might use, save the paper. Somebody just gave me a gift, and I'm going to open it. But you know what? I really believe with all of my heart, in the body of Christ, in believers around the world today, there are a lot of gifts that have never been opened. God has given us gifts. And we say, well, you know, yeah, maybe, maybe that's for later when I get more mature. Or, or yeah, maybe that will work with somebody else, but not now. But, and so uh, what we're going to look at in the next several weeks is that we're going to look at the gifts that God has given us. Uh, 1 Corinthians 12, I don't, believe that we, I, I, I don't believe we have unopened gifts because we want to just ignore gifts or just ignore God's will for our life. But I think sometimes it's because we're uninformed, that we're misinformed. Here's what Paul said, 1 Corinthians 12. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I don't want you to be ignorant. The word ignorant there means I don't want you to be uninformed. I don't want you to be misinformed. I don't want you to be unaware of gifts. And then in the rest of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, Two, three weeks from now, we'll be looking at that. And he talks about the spiritual gifts. Paul lists off the spiritual gifts. But I'm not going to jump into that today. I think a lot of times when people talk about spiritual gifts, they try to lump all the spiritual gift listings into one. The gifts of God, the gifts of Jesus, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And some spiritual gifts tests just really make me sick. Because I think they're, they're just weird. They're just weird. I mean, a person is taken through that, and all of a sudden they say, whoa, I have the gift of uh, an apostle. What is an apostle? But you see, what happens is in a lot of spiritual gifts tests, they take three different gift listings, and they put them in one, but that really is not the way that we have to do it. There are three main gift lists that we want to look at. They're different ones, but they're the gifts of the Trinity into our life. Now, if you have a Spirit-filled study Bible, which I think everybody should get before you get to heaven, some of you just got in a comfort zone that you use the same Bible you've always used, I challenge you to get a Spirit-filled study Bible. At the end of Revelation in the Spirit-filled study Bible, there's a whole section called the Holy Spirit Gifts and Power. <clears throat> and in that, they go into even <clears throat> more detail than what I'm going to share with you this morning. So first of all, there are gifts that are given by God. That, that's your fill-in. There are gifts that are given by God. We call these motivational gifts, motivational gifts. They are supernatural abilities that God gives us at new birth. 
at new birth or when I become a Christian. And he gives those to me for the work of ministry, to be available to see the kingdom building and the kingdom growing. These things are basic motivations. They, they, they move you. They, they motivate you. And you're going to see yourself in some of these as we're talking about them today. The passage is in Romans chapter 12, verses 3 through 8. For I say, through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, as God has dealt to how many of us? Look at your neighbor and say, you are an each, so you are one. So you have one of these gifts. He's given to each of us, each one of us, one of these gifts, but he's also given us a measure of faith to open that gift and to use it. So he says, for we are many, we being many, are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. In other words, he's talking about how does my body work? My body has many members. I have fingers, I have toes, I have an arm, I have a liver, I have a heart, I have eyes, I have a brain, I have all of those, I have blood. So all of those things make up my body. So that this morning when I got out of bed, I said, I'm going to church, it's going to be great. And my liver didn't stay home and say, no, I'm not going to stay home. Because if my liver stayed home, I'm in deep water, right? So it's the same. He's saying, in the body of Christ, the church is like the body of Christ. And each one of us have a part to play. God has given us a motivational gift at new birth. And he says, I want you to open that. I want you to use that in the church, in the kingdom, inside the building, outside the building. These are not just something that we have inside the church, but they're things that we use. And so that way, each one of us have a different gift, have a different motivation leaning. He says, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us. In other words, we have different gifts. Not one is better than the other, just different. Say, just different. Just look around. The person beside you is different. If they're the same, one of you is not useful. <laughs> Having then gifts differing to the according to the grace that's given us, let us what? Use them. It doesn't say frame them, talk about them, say what we have. If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. Say, well, I can't do it like somebody else. No, he says, in proportion to the faith that Jesus has given you. Or ministry, let's use it in our ministry. He who teaches in teaching. He who exhorts in exhortation. He who gives with liberality. He who leads with diligence. He who shows mercy with cheerfulness. So it's talking about different motivations. So look at this. He said, there is a thing called profit motivated. A prophet motivated, and, and it, it just simply says prophecy. Or if you want to use a better word, uh, probably a good word would be a perceiver. Perceiver, you could just write that out. Someone that has this motivation or prophecy is not somebody who goes around telling everybody the future. That's not it. That's the wrong one. You've read the wrong book if you think that's what it is. But it really is a perceiver is someone that has a spirit-given ability to discern and proclaim truth with clarity and apply it to a situation. They're just able, they have a strong sense. If you have this motivational, if you have this motivational gift of prophecy, if you're motivated in that area, here's what you have. You have a strong sense of right or wrong. There's no gray area for you. No gray area. So you know what happens with people like this? Sometimes you're very rude because you only see this or that and you don't see the middle. Now, when you go to a growth track, when you grow to growth track in week three, growth track happens every first, second, third, and fourth Sunday every month and soon a fifth Sunday when we have fifth Sundays and uh, it's going to be on the Holy Spirit. But on the third week, we, you actually take a motivational gifts test. We don't give you a spiritual gifts test because I don't, you can't, because you don't own a spiritual gift. 
the Holy Spirit. Don't, add, don't ever let somebody say, well, you know, I have the gift of the word of knowledge. No, you don't. The Holy Spirit owns that. I'll talk about that in a, in a few weeks. That's a misnomer. Because sometimes people lump them all together. It says the Holy Spirit can work any of those gifts through any believer, that, it, that through any Holy Spirit-empowered uh, believer. But these gifts, these motivational gifts, are the basic motivational for you to do life. So when you take, uh, uh, in growth track, take a short little exam. It takes probably about two minutes, I guess. And then it talks about if you have this area here of a truth teller or a perceiver it says that the father's house here's where you could probably serve and then the second is is people that are ministry motivated ministry motivated would be people that have they just love to serve it can be interpreted as someone who's uh, here's what it says from the growth track a server is a motivated person whose nature is to serve others in some practical way you're never more happy than you are in serving someone else. And then there is the teacher motivated, the teacher motivated. And that's the person who loves to instruct. They're the type of person that, uh, if, if you have this gift, so when I teach something that you've never heard before, you don't just say, oh yeah, I accept that. You know what you do? You say, I'm going to have to study that. I'm going to have to make sure that lines up. Because that's your, that's your basic motivation there. So there's nothing wrong with that. You like to help people understand, and so you break that down. Some, if you ever hang around, if you ever play golf with a teacher, with a motivational gift of teacher, every stroke I make, my resident teacher, my wife, knows how to improve that swing. How many of you know teachers that are like that? Yeah. <laughs> Some of you say, I am me. Encourager, in exhorter, uh, encourager motivated. That's a person who just loves to reassure people. They're like cheerleaders in the body of Christ, you know. They're very friendly. Uh, they're very people-oriented, and they just like to be around people. And then there's a giver motivated. They, they love to give. Their motivational gift is to give their time, their talent, and their resources to the work of God. And they see a need, and they want to meet that need. Leader motivated, people who lead. The person with the gift of leading or administration has a divine ability to understand uh, how you carry this vision on to the next step. And then there's the mercy motivated. Mercy means to feel sympathy for or feel the misery of others. I always score on these motivational tests a zero here. So don't come to me for counseling. Because I'm going to tell you, here's what you do. Get over it and move on in your life. But aren't you glad that we have mercy people that will climb down in the hole with you and be there with you? Thank God for people. Now, there are seven gifts that are listed there. But most of us have a gift mix. Always when I do a gift a test on these, it will always come up that I have two, power, two main gifts teaching and uh, uh, leadership. Those always seem to be the top ones that come for me. But if you'll look at these verses, they're all action-oriented. They say, if you're a teacher, teach. If you have the gift of giving, give. If you prophesy, then prophesy according to your faith. And each one of us has been given a gift. He says, to everyone, to everyone, to everyone. So I really encourage you to go to Growth Track and take that test and let us help you with your motivational gift. May I may not be able to help you with the others, but I believe we can help you to understand your motivational gift. 1 Peter 4, 10 through 11 says, every believer, every believer, every believer, every believer, every believer, right, has received grace gifts. So use them to serve one another as faithful stewards of the many-colored tapestry of God's grace. For example, if you have a speaking gift, speak as though God were speaking his words through you. If you have the gift of serving, do it passionately with the strength God gives you, so that in everything God alone will be glorified through Jesus Christ. For to him belong the power and the glory forever throughout ages. Amen. Now, we could spend an entire series talking about this, but we're not going to do it because we've got a lot of other stuff to do. But let me give you a practical example 
of how that these motivational gifts would work. If we have a dinner, everybody's here, everybody's dressed up, and we're serving spaghetti, and somebody has on a white shirt, and somebody serving comes along, and they spill the entire platter of spaghetti all over the person that has the white shirt. So here's what would happen with different motivational gifts. A person with a motivational gift of prophecy would say, you know, if you'd been more alert and careful, this wouldn't have happened. So you need to learn from your mistakes so this doesn't happen again, right? If a person had a, the serving motivational gift, they would immediately jump up and begin cleaning up the mess. They'd run to the mop room, and they'd get the mop, they'd get the things, and they'd start, nobody have to tell you. That's just your natural desire. You just want to get up and do it. If you had the teaching gift, you would use this event as a teaching moment to begin explaining why the accident happened, how it could be prevented in the future, by simply knowing how to balance the weight just right. And you would take time to explain step by step by step what you wanted to do. Those of you that had the gift of encouragement, the motivational gift, you would begin encouraging the person by exhorting them, it's okay, just keep on trying. Next time you'll do well. And you just, and you just say, you know, you're, this probably would never happen again, you know, just to make them feel good. If you have the gift of giving, You'd probably jump up and say, hey, I'll go order a whole new platter of, of uh, spaghetti. Don't worry about it. We'll just move on into the next room. I'll rent a hotel room. We'll move to that. If you have the gift of leading, you would immediately get up, take charge. You would direct, go get this, go get that, bring this, clean this up, replace this, bring it together, and it just, it just all worked there, right? If you had the gift of mercy, you'd respond by telling the person, it's okay. Don't feel bad. Everybody does it. Everybody, I know, I know you got tears, but it'll be okay. Nobody will worry about that. You just, oh, let me just, let me just pat you on the back. Let me hug you. Let me give you a warm hug. Now, just, just for, for, to just throw it out there. How many of you would say, well, when I list, listen to those motivational things, I think probably I would lean more to the first one of the prophecy of, uh, if you'd have been more alert, this wouldn't have happened. How many of you would say that's you? All right? All right? Yeah. There's a, there's a few of us. How many of you with a serving gift, you wouldn't, nobody would say anything. You'd just jump up and start wiping up the mess. All right? Yeah. Father's house is full of a lot of people with the gift of serving. How about a teaching? Those of you that were there, you would, yeah, yeah, you know who you are. Yeah. You would, uh, how about the gift of encouragement? You'd just come along, encourage verse. Yeah, look at the encouragers. I love them. How about the gift of giving? You'd say, yeah, that's, I just thought about it. We just order a whole new thing, all right, right? Yeah. How about the gift of leading? You say, you know, you just understand what needs to be done and how that would be done. How many of you have that? Yeah. Yeah, we have a lot of leaders in this church. Yes, we do. How about the gift of mercy? Where are my mercy people? Oh, yeah, I love you, mercy people. We need you. We need you in our counseling ministry. So those are gifts given by God when you become converted. Gifts given by God. And when you go to Growth Track, we'll help you understand those. The booklet has all the uh, different ways, how those are used, where you can plug in and do all those. So those are good. The second gift listing in the Bible are the gifts given by Jesus. <clears throat> the gifts given by Jesus. And these are office gifts. These are office gifts. You find it in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 and 12. And he gave some to be. Would you underline that word to be? <clears throat> he gave some to be apostles. We'll look at this later. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it today. Some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. Here's the reason. For the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of faith and the knowledge of the Son of God to be a perfect man to the measure and the stature of the fullness of Christ. He says here, Jesus <clears throat> has given gifts, has given gifts to the body of Christ. And he says that he has given those that are apostles and prophets, evangelists, to equip the church, you, to do the work of ministry. These are often called the five-fold ascension gift ministries. As Jesus was ascending, he gave these gifts. He gave these gifts. 
he gave these gifts. You don't choose these. You don't do a spiritual gifts test, and they come up, and that's who you are. These are gifts. These are gifts. Notice, first of all, he says they are to be. They're to be something. They're in a ministry position, in an office. And so they're there. And second of all, it says he gave some. In the other passage, it said he gave all a motivational gift. But here it says he gave some to be an apostle, a prophet, evangelist, a pastor, teacher. And we'll look at that later. And then there's a third listing called the gifts given by Holy Spirit. Gifts given by Holy Spirit. Notice, the Trinity is involved in all of those. We said in the very beginning, uh, it's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit in week one. So what happens in a lot of spiritual gifts tests, so be careful when you go online and just take a spiritual gifts test. Because a lot of times, they don't just deal with motivational gifts, but they throw all of them in together, and then it gets even more confusing because you say, well, I, this doesn't even fit who I am. So just stick with this. If you're going to do a gifts test, it should be on the motivational gifts. The other gifts will find you. The others will find you. Gifts given by the Holy Spirit. These are manifestation gifts. Manifestation means to make known, to make known. And in a couple of weeks, we'll continue with this, in this one on the, on the gifts of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the giver. He's the one who owns these gifts, and he manifests them when they're needed. Listen to me. We're going to read these gifts in just a minute. And I want you to realize this. If you are a spirit-filled believer, if Jesus has baptized you in or with the Holy Spirit, all of these nine gifts are available to flow through you when the Holy Spirit wants to use that gift through you. The gifts of the Holy Spirit are not included in our Father's House growth track test because these gifts belong to the Holy Spirit. And I will, I, will, I will really lock in on that in a couple of weeks and show you that. So that means that if you're in a small group setting, you don't have to wait for Pastor Tim or, 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 or Michael to be there or Eddie to be there. Because if there's a need that arises, the Holy Spirit at any moment can operate any of these spiritual gifts through any spirit-filled believer. Here's the passage, 1 Corinthians 12, 8 through 11. 4 to 1 is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit. Notice, you don't get it, but it's actually activated to you, through you, channel by Holy Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the same Spirit. To another, the working of miracles to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But one and the same Spirit works all of these things, look at the next line, distributing to each one individually as he wills. So just relax, just relax, because the Holy Spirit is able to, to channel any gift, gift of prophecy, word of knowledge, word of wisdom, faith, miracles. We're going to look at these. We're going to break them down in a few weeks and just look at each of these in a practical way. So here's the next steps today. What is my next step? Well, number one, discover the gifts that God has for you. Discover the gifts that God has for you. You say, well, how do I do that? Well, I encourage you to go to Growth Track. Go to Growth Track. Take that gift assessment and let us help you with that. We also do a profile, personality profile, to help you understand who you are. You are God's workmanship, created, created by Him. You're His workmanship. So each of us, He's put gifts in us in different ways. See, God's design in me reveals God's destiny for me. Here's what I'd like to say to you. Write this down. Let my gift find me. Let my gift find me. So 
People say, well, I just don't know. I, I don't know what my spiritual gifts are. You know, I took this test, and I took that test, and I'm, I'm, just, so, I'm just so upset. And then a lot of people say, well, you know, I would, I would serve, but I don't have a gift. You know, I don't have a gift. And because I don't know my gift, then I don't have a gift. I, I took a spiritual gifts test, but it doesn't make sense to me. I'd like to recommend an approach to you that will help us. Stop gazing at your spiritual navel and step out and serve. And let your gift find you. Let your gift find you. I don't think that you'll ever discover your motivational gift by sitting around saying, well, there's a lot of gifts around, yeah, so I guess that's all right. No, I think, I think you just start doing something. Just start doing something. And in the midst of that, you'll discover. You'll discover. Through doing, I discovered a long time ago, I don't have any gifts for music. Five years, accordion lessons right here. <laughs> the only good thing out of that is I can read music. I guess that's a good thing. But my brother was a band teacher. My sister plays, she sings, she does not thing. Me? No, I... No, it's not me. But I learned because my mother insisted through trial and error, I didn't have that. How do you know you don't have the gift of teaching? Have you tried? Have you volunteered? How do you know you don't have the gift of leadership or mercy? Have you led a life group? Have you led a freedom group in the fall? How do you know if you haven't tried it? How, how, do, you know you, how, how do you know you can't do something unless you try it, right? So here's what I'd like to encourage you. I'm a little skeptical of most spiritual gift tests because you can, you, can, uh, you can skew it. I keep saying you can screw it. No, that's not the word. You can skew it. You can say, oh, I think they're leaning. If I answer this this way, it's going to show out this way. So I think we have to be careful because we can, we can take a spiritual gifts test and then another spiritual gifts test and another, and it can, and it can conf confuse everything. I like to think that Scripture helps us take it a step farther. In church, in your small group, or with others, why don't you just pause and ask, hey, is anybody physically hurting right now? Anybody suffering with chronic pain? Anybody have a need right now, or you have a decision that you have to make? And then take your hands out of your pocket, lay hands on them, and pray for God's healing power. Or if they need to make a decision, pray and get quiet and see if the Holy Spirit will give some direction in that line. I think we need to spend less time searching to identify our spiritual gifts and more time praying, giving, helping, teaching, serving, exhorting, and your gift will find you. It will be natural. You say, this is me. This is me. So what are you saying, Terry? I'm saying, find a hurt and help heal it. Look for a need and help meet it. Be alert for a cry and help answer that. Listen for God's voice and speak it. Witness. Invite people. Bring them to church. Identify somebody's weakness and overcome it. Look for what's missing and supply it. Act first and ask, is this my gift later? Wow, I was so touched this week by a testimony from Amanda that she put on Facebook of how she worked this very thing out. So Amanda, would you come on up and share with us? Give her a welcome as she comes right now. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Um, I'm Amanda. I've been coming to the Father's house for a long time. Yeah. I was actually trying to figure out how long it's been, and I'm not quite sure. Um, so I'm going to share something that I put on Facebook. Um, it happened a few days ago, and I tried to explain it to someone without using this post, and I realized that this was something I wrote right after it happened. Right. So these, I think, are God's words because it's been able to yeah. reach quite a few people and have gotten a lot of really good feedback from it. So I'll just get started then. Um, God called me to do something this morning, and I have never felt so humbled by an experience. I saw him laying behind a building on the ground with no shoes on. I could only see his bare, dirty feet. <clears throat> and like so many people, I just kept driving. I had to get to work or I'd be late. 
But as I was driving away, I hear a voice telling me to turn around. He doesn't even have shoes. He needs you. So I drove back to him, and when I asked him what he needed, the only thing he requested was a tent. He didn't even mention the shoes. So I bought the tent, along with a sleeping bag, a water jug, and a pair of shoes. And when I brought everything back to him and I put the tent on the ground, excuse me, he gasped and said, you got me a house. I have a house. And he said, thank you, Lord. And then he started to cry. And then I started to cry. And the Lord had called me to give this man shoes. And it, I ended up giving him that plus shelter and comfort. What an incredible, amazing experience. I will never forget this encounter. And I know this young man will never have to question whether God loves him. And I realized today as I was driving here to talk about this, that I was pretty scared before I turned around and went back to this, to this man. And as I was sitting in the, the spot right in front of him, he was asleep. It's about eight o'clock in the morning. I'm all dressed for work and he's there sleeping just on his face. He's just on the ground, no shoes. And I got out of my car and I, I kind of had to startle him a little bit when I woke him up. And I remember thinking, God, give me the strength to do what you need me to do, say the words I need to say. And it was in those moments that I realized I just got to do it. You just yeah. got to listen. Right. You, I am sure I've had these moments before and I ignored them and wow. I just went about my day and yeah. I just kept going. But if you just do it, if you just listen, this could be you. You could be sharing this testimony. And I've realized now that every time that I have this moment, I'm going to share it. I'm going to sure. tell people yes. about it. Yes. I'm going to post about it. I'm going to tell yes. Pastor Terry about it. It's those moments that really define who we are as Christians yes. when Amen. we can share that love. So, Amen. Thank you. Amen. Give Amanda a hand. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So what are you saying, Terry? I'm just saying this, number two. Use the gifts that God has given you. First Peter says, God has given each one of you a gift from a great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. At the end of World War II, Churchill cabled Roosevelt and said, give us the tools and we'll finish the job. We'll finish the job. He was facing a demanding beyond himself. He needed the tools. And I believe sometimes as a church, we say, Lord, you've called us to build your kingdom. So just, Lord, just give us the tools. And I believe the Lord cables back from heaven saying, I've given you the tools. I've given you the gifts. Now finish the job. Finish the job. Lead people into a growing relationship with Jesus. How do we do that? We do that by each of us as in the body of Christ doing our part. What is your motivational gift? Get involved in that. Use it. Use it in church. Use it in the community. What is that? And you say, well, you know, I, but here's what will happen. You'll be just like Amanda. I can't, I can't believe God used me like this. I can't believe. The first time you, the first time you encourage someone, you're walking through Publix and you see somebody that looks like they're maybe in tears or something, and, 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 you, have the, and you, have the, you have this motivational gift of mercy, and you go over to them and say, you know, I don't know what you're going through, but it, would it be all right for me to just give you a hug? You say, oh, I'd be scared to do that. You know, you're scared. You ask permission, you know. I mean, of course, if you're a man, don't ask a woman to eat a hug. So let's be careful with that. Or don't do a small kid. I, you, have to add, you, have to add, <laughs> you have to add stuff to the end of that, won't you? Or maybe you're walking in church, even coming today, and you see somebody, and you just feel like that inside of you, that maybe the Holy Spirit has said, just let them know that it's going to be all right. So you walk up to somebody and say, I, and then we're scared, right? What if it's wrong? What if I'm made a fool of? But what if you're not made a fool of? You know, I, this may sound strange, but I hope this makes sense to you. I just sensed, I walked by and God said to tell you that it's going to be all right. Can you imagine? See, I can't do this. My job is to equip all of us included me too. I have motivational gifts I gotta use to equip all of us to do this. But can you imagine what would happen if from the moment right now for the rest of this week 
and we say, wow, I'm going to be available to whatever God wants to do because I want to see people led to a growing relationship with Jesus. Amen, amen. Let's pray. Father, wow. Just amazing that, I mean, you could have done this any way you wanted with your kingdom. You could have shouted from heaven and sent the warring angels and made everybody to do. But Lord, you chose frail, failing instruments like me. motivate us to do something for others to build your kingdom and Lord we can't be the church that you call us to be unless we all find our place in the body of Christ and no one is better than any other the eye can't say to the finger I'm more important than you the mouth can't say to the heart I don't need you Lord it takes every one of us and we're not to try to evaluate our motivational gift by someone else's. Because you said, to whom much is given, much is required. As you continue to just talk to the Lord and pray, maybe you're here today and you've never invited Jesus into your heart and into your life. That's the first step. That's the first step. And the Holy Spirit is just touching your heart today. Maybe you've gone to church all of your life, but you've never prepared for your eternity. Jesus Christ came. He died on the cross for your sins and my sins. Some of you are carrying the load of your sin and your guilt. Even from this week, you're just carrying the load of that. Jesus came to take that. You can't pay for your sins. You can't just get better on your own. But Jesus said, I'll take your sins. He went to the cross. He paid the penalty for my sins and yours. And then on the third day, he rose so that we could rise in victory. So if you're here today or you're watching online and you say, you know what, Pastor, today I need to invite Jesus into my heart, rededicate my life to him. Would you raise your hands right now and let me pray for you? Let me pray for you today. Thank you. Others today, just lift your hand if you're online. Just lift your hand. Let me pray with you today. Hey, let's pray this prayer together. Father God, thank you for loving me. Thank you for caring for me. I ask you to forgive me of my sins and to cleanse me and to fill me with your spirit. As best as I know how, I'll serve you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen.